Say the Moon. This is Blake Cousins, and we're live on the radio, taking your calls from around the world in regard to UFOs. We have a special guest tonight, Robert Bingham, the man who summons UFOs. We're also waiting for Preston Dennett, the man that's trying to get disclosure from the White House, and we're trying to get 25,000 signatures, along with Dr. John Ellis, a promoter for Third Phase of the Moon, and we're going to talk about what's coming up next in the future for us. So let's get right to it and take the first call. Hey, Robert, thanks for joining us. How you doing, Robert? Yes, I'm uh, doing fine. Um, and I'm glad you have your show. And that I can hey, well, honest. we're here with the man that summons UFOs. Robert contacted Third Phase of Moon approximately, you know, early in 2012. He was introduced to us by a fella that was his neighbor who claimed that he knew of a person that could summon UFOs, and we got in contact with Robert Bingham himself, and uh, it's been a journey, hasn't it, Robert? Oh, it's been a journey. The last 10 months have been, uh, I was uh, amazed at all the things that we've done in 10 months. Uh, it's been, a, it's still an incredible journey, it's been, and it's getting more incredible all the time. Actually, <clears throat> today when I was working, uh, two ships, uh, came to see me, and they were very high, though, but they're always around me, and uh, I just get, you know, every time I see them, I get uh, energized, uh, so to speak. Well, you have this ability, you know, that you claim that you could summon them at will, and we've proved and put you to the test, actually, to see if you really could do this, and, you know, early on at Third Phase, we announced that you were going to start summoning UFOs for the public, and you're going to go public with your story, and you started to do these, uh, you know, displays of your power at Park Plaza Hotel in Los Angeles. And, you know, people showed up hundreds at a time at times. And, uh, you know, a lot of them left, uh, came their skeptics and left their becoming true believers in UFOs, right? That's the truth. Uh, a lot of people went over there to debunk me and uh, became one of my biggest followers. <laughs> um, actually, how it's, should I tell you how it started, Blake. Um, what happened is I just started to tell people to come over to the park because I, I worked by the park. Uh, and uh, and I would uh, show them what I what they did. Cause, and, they, and I didn't know they were going to bring 50 people. And uh, after that, Mark got in touch with you. And uh, then, then I realized, well, I'm going to put Ali on the map as one of the UFO hotspots because, uh, you know, it, it is the city of angels and uh, and that's what I believe they are, that they're angels. Uh, and so that's how it all started. And it's, uh, it, But uh, actually I've been doing it for like about 13 years, well, about 10 years, 10 to 13 years. I just... Uh, well, you know, been, Robert, uh, we've, we've sent our own cameraman on the scene when you were doing the summonings and uh, we actually captured UFOs in the skies with many eyewitnesses capturing the same thing with their video cameras. Uh, Joe Rodriguez was there capturing, doing his own investigation, trying to, you know, debunk the whole situation. And, you know, all these videos came in. They're posted up on Third Phase of the Moon. And you have, I think, you know, half a million, millions of views from around the world. And now you have your own YouTube channel called UFO Robert Bingham. Right. And, uh... Um, when, when it uh, gets a little warmer out here, I'm going to do a lot more events. Um, so I invite everybody to go there. And, and uh, like I said, uh, they'll be announced on UFO Robert Bingham. Or, uh, I just type out my name, Robert Bingham, on Google, and uh, and you would be, uh, I would uh, post the... I would post the event on there, so uh, people, whoever wants to come down, there, invite them all if you're a skeptic, or if you've never seen a UFO, this is the time to come. And, no, if there's um, there that want to see UFOs for themselves, I strongly urge them, if they live in the Los Angeles area, to subscribe to UFO Robert Bingham, because he will announce when he uh, does these for the public and uh, it's free for everybody to show up and bring your cameras and you know if you catch anything we'd sure like to see that third phase of moon as well hey robert i want you to stick around we're gonna you know don't go anywhere we're just gonna get to that well, next. I'll, I'll be right here blake okay good um 
Welcome to Third Phase of Moon. This is Blake Cousins. Who am I speaking with? This is Bradford Blair. Hey, Bradford. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. You're good, good. So how, how long have you been following Third Phase of Moon? I'd say about a year. Have you seen any of uh, Robert Bingham's videos that we've been uh, talking about tonight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I'm, what I was wanting to call about was that I, I can talk to him too, but um, it's more like when I see him, it's not when I bring him. They, they choose, um, and and it's also, you know, I told him, you know, my father was with me, and I said, you know, are you ready to go? You know, I was ready to go. They take me whatever, and the thing came down, but it just zoomed back off. It didn't take us. And that's why, and it was two of them. So that, that's what really caught my ear when he said there was two of them. So. Well, that's interesting. So do you still see UFOs, uh, you know, in recent times, or is this that one? No, whenever I go outside, whenever I choose to go out, they're there. So do you have and, any and video uh, equipment that you uh, can use? I'm going, to shoot? Well, that's, yeah, I'm going to be doing that, sir. I'm going to be doing that. So I just want you to recognize my name so that when I post, you'll know. Okay, so let's get your name again, and uh, we got your number. Yeah, and you definitely, for anybody who's captured anything amazing, you know, it's pretty easy to get in touch with us at Third Phase of Moon. First place is you go to YouTube, Third Phase of Moon, and we have all the connections, our Facebook, our uh, Twitter, and our Skype account uh, links. And then, uh, you know, we'll, we look at everything that everybody sends to us, so we're definitely looking forward to, you know, seeing some of that stuff come in. But well, it's, it's very true. That's why I'm saying I can get video equipment and take, you know. But it's not like when everybody's gathered. They don't. I don't videotape, you know. I don't. They, you know, maybe that's why they like me because I don't. I like to go uh, have them take me or whatever, whatever they do. I don't like well, to got brag Robert about on the it. Line. He, he, you know, he has experience in these, and we have. Video but I'm on the phone with you. I'm on the phone with you, so time so, hey, and things have you know, changed. Robert's question, so. or Robert, do you have any advice about? camera equipment do they seem shy of that sometimes when you're holding your video camera no actually I feel they want to be filmed and they want to notify everybody that they're here and uh, my pr problem is is that I don't have the great equipment but I do the best I can with what I have but I think um, it, they're not afraid they wouldn't show up if if uh, they were afraid of camera equipment they wouldn't show up in LA but um, Sometimes there, there's certain uh, craft that they don't think that you should have pictures of, and they and they will prevent that from happening. But um, okay. as far as uh, taking him, I think he, he maybe they felt he wasn't ready to go yet. Or maybe they did. It was just a split second of time. It only takes well, I believe it only takes a second of time to travel wherever in time. It only takes a split second. They can oh, yeah. bring you back the same second that the same second they take you, they can bring you back. So it feels like you never left. I just when want to I remind anybody happened. that's listening to this radio show, they could call in live right now. And here's the number. It's one three four seven nine three four zero three seven eight. And if we're not taking, uh, picking up the call as you call in, just hold on. We're going to get to everybody's uh, you know, questions and uh, what they have to say here. So go ahead. Hello? Hello? This is Preston. Oh, Preston. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. I'm doing good. How are you? Yes, doing great. Thanks for joining us here at Third Phase of Moon. You know, Preston Dennett's been working really hard trying to get the word out, get disclosure from the White House. We're trying to get 25,000 signatures, and we just did an interview with you uh, about a week ago, right? Right, right, a couple of weeks ago. That's right. Yeah, and I, I heard uh, that Robert was going to be on, and I actually went down and uh, to see Robert and uh, watch him call down UFOs, and I have to say I was impressed. Stuff did show up. It didn't come close like I wanted it to, and uh, the skeptic in me, you know, the investigator in me, can't quite say that these were actual UFOs, but uh, I certainly am a believer, and I, you know, met certainly a lot of other people who have this ability, and I've uh, been able to show me UFOs as well, so this is absolutely something that people are doing, you know, across the United States and the world, and I think it's a really exciting development in UFO research, bringing it you know, down into the lab, so to speak. So it's, it's, this is a big deal, too. I know that a lot of people don't take UFOs seriously, but if we were to end the cover-up, it could really change the world immensely. I mean, we could solve the economic crisis, the energy crisis, the environmental crisis by releasing this 
uh, UFO technology that we do have in our possession. So it's a big deal, and it will affect people's lives. So uh, we should take it take it seriously. You know, did now. you say that the White House has suddenly changed their whole life? Uh, they brought up the numbers on this petition as far as now giving disclosure at first it was 5,000 we're trying to get the 25,000 signatures I think a couple days after we released this video trying to get the signatures they just bumped it up to a hundred thousand plus yeah I, I don't know what's going on there's you know each White House has had to deal with the UFO problem and I have in their own way I remember uh, uh, Carter Jimmy Carter said he was going to release the files and he never did and uh, you know, each, it, it's a big, long story with each president, actually. So uh, I don't know how the Obama administration is going to deal with it. I was hoping for, you know, a little bit more openness, but we're really not seeing it. So I don't know. Well, yeah, you've been doing a lot of work as far as trying to get the Bigelow Aerospace to come clean, or, you know, they're try, they're doing something. They're up to something, right? Yep, yep. This, this is another person, you know, who is in the know and kind of has access to this uh, technology and knowledge that we don't have that's not in the public arena and I think it's time that this cover up ends I think it's a failure anyway I mean there are so many people coming out of the woodwork right now saying that we do have these saucers we, our military is working with the ETs so uh, it's, there, there is a cover up it's still in place but it's been a failure and I don't think it can go on forever Hey, Preston, you, you wrote many books uh, about ufology, and you've done a lot of investigation. Can you tell me why the main media really doesn't pick up on Robert Bingham's story and try and, you know, try and confirm it for themselves, at least show up to the park and see what's up? Because, you know, this guy's doing this. He's had a, What kind of evidence do they need to prove? Wouldn't it be a story that the main media would jump on? You would think so, but there is an active cover-up in the media of UFO information. Uh, there was a book by a, God, I forget his first name, Hansen is his last name. It's called The Missing Times. And he pretty much demonstrated right up and down the board that there is a media cover-up of really good UFO information. And despite that, you know, UFO stories do make it into the media. There, there was a sighting over O'Hara Airport, um, the Stevensville, Texas sightings, the Phoenix Lights, of course. Once a year, about, I'd say, a huge UFO story does break. And, you know, the evidence, I, don't, I can't tell you why they're ignoring um, stories like this, like Roberts. Um, they shouldn't, and I think that there's a lot of public interest in this, absolutely. And uh, I don't know, we've got to basically, I think, socialize the conflict as more and more people become involved in this movement. Uh, I think we're going to see more and more attention paid to it and more funds devoted to it, and uh, people are going to start taking it more seriously. UFOs are becoming mainstream, but very slow. And, you know, speaking of that, this is, I think, why the UFOs don't come swooping down. They're really, really close. I mean, Robert's bringing them, and they're, they're pretty far up there a lot of the time. Sometimes, you know, I've seen some of his videos are remarkable. What I saw was interesting, but it wasn't enough to, like, totally destroy someone's belief system. So I think the UFOs kind of play a little game where they're coming close, but not too close, because they don't want to upset, you know, society too much. You know, people might uh, become disturbed, shocked, and uh, people aren't still ready, possibly, for, you know, UFOs making their uh, public performance. Exactly. Hey, we're going to take a call from 201 real quick. Who am I speaking with? Go ahead. This Hello? Is yeah. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Is this one Hi, one 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 John, one one? How you doing? Doing good. Um, <clears throat> I want to talk about the petitions again. You know, right now is the time for people to help because they did raise the threshold. It, initially, it started with five thousand signatures, and Stephen Bassett was good at getting twelve thousand. So they had to respond. Some low-level staffer responded, and you know, it ended up being some BS statement. Then they raised the threshold to twenty-five thousand, and just like you said, a few days after. You announced your video when they th saw a little bit of a threat. They raised it to 100,000. Now is the time that we need to get every believer, every person involved to actually go on petitions.whitehouse.gov, find the petition, and just sign it. It takes 25 seconds of your time, and it can make, it, it can change history. History is in the making as we speak. You're right. You know, we, we got that threshold two days before they changed it, so... 
if we don't do it now, it's going to be almost impossible to do it in the future, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Because if it's difficult to get 25,000, imagine how much harder it's going to be to reach 100,000. They're almost and that's making what it stands now. They're making it impossible for the American public to get any disclosure. They're just wanting to keep everything a secret from us and hiding everything from uh, you know the public. What you know, as it? Preston was saying earlier with regards to you know our our president, I too was very hopeful that he would finally do something. And now that he's in his you know second term, which is his lame duck term, really you know is he going to do anything at this point? We don't know and. He's not really the one in control, according to a lot of people. So what, what's to say it's going to happen? You know, I, I'm losing my faith. If he didn't do it already in his first term, he hasn't given us any assurances of disclosure now, so I don't see anything happening. It's up to us. It's up to the people to force it. We have to do it. Just like you guys are broadcasting, you know, your sightings that you receive from around the world. Robert's doing his events. It's uh, And Preston's doing his research and his books. That's how it's going to happen. John's nailing it right on the button. You know, Dr. John Ellis has been uh, trying to help Third Phase Moon getting the word out. You've helped us uh, come across some amazing interviews, right? Yes, and there's going to be more to come. You know, we're going to reach the reach all peaks of the corners of the globe. There's a lot of people around the world, a lot of people who don't necessarily have access to the media that we do, but they have access to Internet, which gives them access to YouTube, and all of a sudden people are being aware of things that they've never once heard before. So this is a great opportunity to, you know, expand the knowledge to everybody. I want to ask you, John, what do you think that uh, separates Third Phase of Moon from everybody else on YouTube in regards to UFOs? Well, for starters, you guys are constantly on it. You know, you're everybody's, you're always putting something out there. You're always fresh in the news. You're always putting out a new video and people know to give you the footage. And they know that you don't talk to the footage. They know that you guys don't make your own footage. You just receive the footage from people and you put it out there for people to decide. You guys are acting as unbiased journalists the way it should be. If the real media acted that way, then we wouldn't be in the position we're in. But this is what you guys makes you guys the number one you know, UFO paranormal related station right now. Hell yeah. Uh, and I... Go ahead, Robert. Yes, uh... You're absolutely correct. Uh, I'd like to thank you, Blake, for putting my stuff out there and, and uh, getting people to see what I was, I've been trying to do. It. Uh, it, my mission is to enlighten them to the fact that they are here and they are trying to help us uh, um, transi- transition into a new new way of living. Without a, I hate you know, without oil, without pollution, without uh, nukes and, and without all those things that we don't need, you know. You know, the Anunnaki have been compared to the Transformers in many ways. Hey, John, looks like you got a fan here in the chat room. Baybet Bombshell says, I love John. <laughs> well, tell her to contact me anytime. <laughs> well, you know, it's uh, pretty amazing having everybody on the show, and we've still got a few more minutes left. Robert, what... Um, future things are you going to be doing in 2013? Are you going to be bringing these things closer, changing locations, you know, traveling a little bit, you know, sharing uh, your powers and getting around? Well, yeah, I'm going to... My next event will probably be in the beginning of February. And, uh, but I haven't made up my mind yet. I I hope it gets, you know, stays warm and and, and I have better... uh, I do better when it's clear and it's not cloudy. Um, yeah, I, I might try doing it in a couple of different locations also. Probably the Rose Bowl or um, uh, maybe somewhere else. But uh, I, I know that these uh, future events that I'm going to do are going to be uh, a lot greater and a lot better than uh, the stuff I have already did, which was great. Um, Disclosure has to happen, and and, uh, and now's the time. It's going to change. I'm going to like a phase two. This is a new year, and uh, I invite again all the people and the skeptics to be there. And we've been getting a lot of those here at Third Phase Moon over the past few years. We just got one from our uh, 
horse, uh, uh, you know, today out of Groom Lake, Nevada. Apparently, he lives in Arizona. He gets to Groom Lake. We're really close to it, and he's capturing experimental aircraft flying. He has about a 50-second window of opportunity to capture these things because he's in this little cavern where, as it flies over whatever aircraft he's shooting, he's kind of blocked by mountains left to right. So he's got a really quick opportunity to shoot these things without being seen. He sent us some controversial footage over the past year, like we do at Third Phase of the Moon. We're looking at it. We don't see any kind of hoax of any kind. It looks very legit. We're going to put it out uh, here tonight, and um, we're going to let the people decide, as usual, here at Third Phase of the Moon. That's what we do. For the hilly part of Malibu, and the... Uh they were red and they were glowing really. Uh, they just appeared out of nowhere and they were like in a flight formation. And then they just went out just like that. Uh, so I really uh, couldn't tell you if they were UFOs, but what they did was very unusual. So I don't know, at nighttime it's kind of hard. Hey, hey we Robert, got a, I just have one quick question. Robert? One quick question, we got about one minute left before right. we ask the I question. Thank- I want to thank Robert Bingham for joining us here at Third Phase of Moon, and you keep up your hard work, what you're doing over there in Los Angeles. Okay, Robert? Oh, I will do that. Thank you very much for letting me be on the show. Hey, no problem. We'll have you back here in the future and let us know when you capture something. And Dr. John Ellis, you know, thanks for your insight, and uh, we've got to get those petitions signed, right? Yes, absolutely. Everyone, please sign. Have you guys have you guys heard of the uh, the other guy that can summon your foes called Prophet Yahweh? Yes. yes, Prophet Yahweh. He's kind of retired at the moment. We'd love to have him on the show if you could get it. Preston Dennett, thanks for all your that you've been doing over here at Third Phase of Moon. And if anybody out there has captured anything amazing, you could contact us via Skype or Facebook. Third Phase of Moon. My name's Blake Cousins, and we'll see you again next time. Log Talk Radio. Third phase of moon. Third phase. Third of moon. Phase of moon. Welcome back to Third Phase of Moon. This is Blake Cousins. Thanks to everybody around the world joining us live right now on the radio. We have some amazing guests tonight on our show. First, we're going to speak with Preston Dennett. He's a great author. He's wrote many investigative books on the UFO phenomenon hitting worldwide. He's written books such as UFOs in California, UFOs over New York. We're going to speak with him here very shortly. Everybody call in if they want to speak with uh, our special guests, also included Joe Rodriguez, UFO investigator right there in downtown L.A., covering what Robert Bingham claims he could do, summon UFOs. Robert Bingham will be here as well and take your questions. So again, everybody, hold on tight. Welcome to Third Phase of Moon, and we're going to go to our first call right now. Hi, Blake. Hey, welcome to Third Phase of Moon. This is Blake Cousins. Who am I speaking with? This is Preston Dennett. Hey, Preston. Thanks for joining us again right here at Third Phase. It's been uh, you know, an amazing ride. You've got these books that you've been writing for many years and I want to cut straight to the chase we're going to talk about the president involvement back in the day with President Eisenhower with aliens and secret meetings right? That's right, it's quite a story actually which took place at uh, Edwards Air Force Base it's uh, uh, really you know, kind of uh, right there in the fringe of the whole UFO uh, all the UFO stories that are out there And uh, but if you go look into it, it's got a surprising amount of evidence to support it actually and uh, the story basically in a nutshell is in 1954 President Eisenhower disappeared basically uh, from the press they could they did not know where he was and uh, no one knew what was going on and newspapers were actually reporting that he had been killed at some at one point um, that was immediately retracted and they, a story was put out that uh, he had an emergency dental appointment but immediately after this uh, reports are also coming out that he had been secreted off to uh, Edwards Air Force Base, where he had a meeting with these ETs. And uh, this 
story uh, was leaked by uh, several, actually two or three researchers, UFO researchers who said that they had first-hand witnesses who were there at the base. And uh, so immediately right off the bat, this story had at least some meat to it, right? No doubt. You know, we've talked and spoken with some major ufologists uh, around the world, including Stanton Friedman, nuclear physicist, and he thinks that, you know, our present-day uh, president at the, at, at the moment, Obama, really has no power and has no knowledge of what really is going on in uh, alien involvement and UFO activity uh, with the general yeah, I public. Agree. Yeah, I agree. I don't, I don't think he's really in the loop, not like some presidents. Eisenhower was, George Bush, you know, the first one, definitely he was the head of the CIA. I'm sure he knows what was going on. Carter, he saw a UFO when he was uh, governor of Florida, I mean, I'm sorry, Georgia. And, uh, but apparently he was not an insider and tried to get some of this UFO stuff released and was unsuccessful at it. So uh, Reagan, he apparently was an insider to some degree and made several veiled comments to the public about an alien threat and had this whole Star Wars project as well, you know, which many people thought was something to do with these UFOs. So definitely presidents have been struggling with it. And Eisenhower was the one who apparently was majorly... Um, had this huge meeting, right? And uh, I mean, and as time has gone on, more witnesses have come forth. Hank Craftsman, uh, Don Phillips, he's a CIA, uh, worked with the CIA developing secret aircraft. And both of them have said flat out this meeting did happen. And Brigadier General Lovkin, he worked closely with Eisenhower and confirms that Eisenhower was definitely very interested in UFOs and talked about it a lot. So there's been, it's coming from a number of different sources. And the point I want to make, really, is look at this area where this took place. This is Edwards Air Force Base. They, in 1947, right when we had our first wave of you know, sightings, a big super wave, um, there was a huge wave of sightings over Edwards, and it hasn't stopped since. I mean, in 1965, there was a huge radar lock-on with a bunch of objects hovering right over the base. It caused a huge deal. In 1958, Gordon Cooper, the astronaut, was actually at the base when a UFO landed, and they took footage of it. He didn't see the UFO land, but uh, he saw the footage. He developed it, sent it off to his superiors, and disappeared. He never saw the footage again, and repeated inquiries have not produced this footage. So we know the government does have you know, knowledge of this stuff, and particularly at Edwards. What's going on at Edwards is crazy. Incredible. We're talking with Preston Dennett, UFO investigator and author of many books in regards to the phenomenon of UFOs. And if anybody has any questions for Preston and some of the other guests coming up, I know I've seen some calls coming in. We're going to be getting to those here shortly. You can call into 1347-934-0378. Preston, do you um, have any idea what Eisenhower walked away with? in his mind that day what did he you know learn or was he afraid after the meeting or was he more insightful and positive about the future um i think he was uh not encouraged by it actually because what apparently happened according to you know the stories that are coming out is uh, there was a meeting that e et's were very concerned about our uh, use of nuclear weapons and uh, wanted us to give it up and they wanted to and part spiritual knowledge and things like this and we wanted their technology so it wasn't like a super amicable meeting and uh, apparently eisenhower was afraid that this, there was going to be a huge religious backlash and a huge you know upset to our societies so he decided not to release this information and apparently this is you know all part of the cover-up that's been going on since you know 1947 at least well, I don't know about you, but we have 45,000 subscribers myself. You know, I'm ready for disclosure. I think everybody out there is ready for disclosure. We're not going to panic and raid the street. <laughs> you know, like, wow, aliens do exist in our mass universe. You know, just give it up already. We're trying to get this petition signed with 25,000 required to get some answers from the White House. We're trying to get that uh, going. Uh, what do you think about that, Preston? I think it's a great idea. There's been a movement towards that for a long time. You know, when I got in, involved in this field like 20 more years ago, um, there was talk about disclosure back then. And it seems like it's always been on the horizon. But as time goes on, you can see that there's a kind of a crumbling to this cover-up. There's been a lot of people coming out now with a, you know, 
Stephen Greer and uh, some other people doing these projects, bringing out government officials, have gone on record saying that they've worked with UFOs and uh, UFO technology. So it's kind of an open conspiracy at this point, and I think absolutely you're right. I don't think people would panic at all. I think we're kind of already inundated to, <laughs> with this kind of stuff. Well, we're going to go to our next uh, guest. You stay here, right, right here, Preston. This is uh, Ivy West from actually a close neighbor of mine in the state of Hawaii. She lives in Honolulu, and she's a big promoter of UFO events, bringing the top people in from around the world. Hey, thanks for joining us right here at Third Phase of Moon, Ivy. Hi. Can you hey, hear how me? How you doing? Okay. I'm, I didn't know I was going to be on the radio. <laughs> Well, you're on live on Third Phase of Moon. Hey, can you tell our viewers, you know, they watch live and, you know, we get a lot of views on our radio show, what you're up to and, uh, you know, what kind of help are you uh, working on to get this word out? We're trying to get disclosure. Well, disclosure is through the people always. The governments of the planet are not going to disclose what they're doing. Uh, a good friend of mine, uh, Jordan Maxwell, uh, said that the old magi used to work their magic upon the masses with a wand. Do you know what that wand was made out of? It was made out of Hollywood. Hollywood is always telling you what it's going to do, what it's been doing, uh, or what it's currently doing. You've got, uh, you've got uh, Darth Vader talking through the triangle of Freemasonry and these secret uh, orders and fraternal brotherhood are running the planet. You know, it's not just male-dominated, uh, it's female as well. They're, they're all involved on keeping, on keeping this quiet. There are literally thousands and thousands of reports of UFOs daily around the world. There is so much conclusive evidence that it's ridiculous. And they keep saying that, oh, they don't exist and that we would have proof. There's so much proof out there, folks. Just, I mean, this radio show and... An internet uh, program is fantastic for you folks to upload your uh, your photos and your videos. And when I have time, I'm going to upload a couple of photos that I'll send you that my good friend Carlos Diaz took in Mexico as his truck was sitting on the edge of a canyon. This big plasma uh, UFO came right up and hovered above him. You can even see the reflection in the... Um, in the uh, hood of the truck and we went down there and uh, you can see them i mean they're they're there they're everywhere so you wow the... I, I look forward to receiving those photos we do receive them from around the world on a daily basis and we go over them and uh, we almost post daily sometimes two or three times daily on ufo sightings from halfway around the planet everywhere and um you know, the easiest way to get in touch with us is via Skype or Facebook and uh, visit Third Phase of Moon dot, uh, at YouTube. And, you know, we want to get the word out. Ivy, I want to have you stick with us. That's great. And, uh, yeah, these Illuminati uh, secret symbols. Go ahead. Do you have a second to say something? The governments of the planet are not going to admit that they exist because if they do, then people are, aren't saying, well, do they or don't they exist? They're saying, well, who are they and what do they want? And the governments can't have that because I believe, I believe a lot of them are involved, uh, probably every single one on the planet that's of any significance um, because there's so much visitation on this planet and I believe some interaction. We've got technology that's been reverse engineered and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So uh, I think it's pretty amazing. And Thank scary you. at the same time when they don't want to tell us what's going on. And if they have their own agenda, well, then we're just going to have to wait till they're ready, and then we have no uh, repercussions or any strategy, strategy or defense to uh, go by because we came, we're unprepared. All right. Well, each government. Go ahead, sir. Um, yeah, this is Preston. Yeah, each uh, each government, you know, is making strides towards disclosure. And certainly the United States has fallen behind lots of other governments like, you know, France and Canada and England who have all, you know, released a lot of UFO documents which prove that the government at least knows about this stuff. Uh, wait a second, Robert. Uh, wait, wait, yes. before this is an exclusive first on Third Phase of Moon radio show, the new event 
Robert Bingham, the UFO summoner, is going to do it again in Los Angeles. Can you tell our listeners right now where it's going to be and when? Go ahead, Robert. Well, I've I've discovered a place in Griffin Park. uh, It's on top of a hill next to a place called Cedar Grove. And uh, it's got a 380 view, a 360 view, I'm sorry. Uh, and I think it's fantastic for the event that I'm going to have. I'm gonna, I decided to have it on February the 10th at uh, 11 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, in the morning. And uh, so I invite everybody to go up there. It's a uh, group of park. Uh, you would uh, go up Commonwealth next to the Greek Theater. And uh, I, I'll post uh, more information on that site. I just don't have it right now. Uh, you can go on my site, which is uh, RobertBingham.org, or uh, on YouTube, uh, Robert Bingham, uh, the summoner, or a uh, UFO Robert Bingham. So, uh, Preston, are you you live in Los Angeles? Are you going to be showing up to the February 10th event at 11 at uh, Griffith Park? Um, you know, that's not far from where I work, so I, I might be able to make it. Yeah, I, I certainly had a very uh, good time when I um, attended the earlier meetings and uh, definitely got to see some stuff, so that was very interesting. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to try and make it. Um, I think it's important what Robert's doing, and I, I think he's right. I think the UFOs are going to show up, and it's going to be undeniable, and uh, I I think our society will be able to take it. and. I think it's only a matter of time. I mean, because the ETs could conceivably end the cover-up instantly. I mean, they have the ability to do that, and I think the only reason they're not doing that is, you know, for a couple of reasons. Uh, so to not upset our society, and because, honestly, we are not a super mature species. We still have a lot of our own internal problems in terms of, uh, you know, prejudice and, uh, you know, class warfare and things like this, and pollution and so on. So uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I think it's coming up, though. I don't. I, I don't think it's going to be too long. What do you think, Ivy? This is Joe Rodriguez to uh, Blade. In case you need me. Oops. I see that it's one one one. Joe Rodriguez is an investigator and is showing up to uh, Robert Bingham's UFO summonings. And uh, you came as a skeptic. Am I right? That's correct. Let me say something. I went there to videotape Mr. Uh, Bingham showing uh, some type of trickery and in the process of trying to discover that he might be doing some trickery I ended up finding out that he's he's the real thing I just there's others that uh, that do the same thing he does but I've never seen a UFO in my life and uh, when I went to the very first time the beginning of the year last year around April I believe April or May uh, I was shocked with what I saw um, but I'm also shocked with what I heard Mr. Bingham say, and I do respect the gentleman. He's, he's still a human being, just like me. And he says that every eye will see and see these things soon. And that kind of reminds me of where the Bible says that every eye will see Jesus. So I also saw people calling these things as they were shocked to see them and very happy and what have you. And they were saying, uh, save us, show us the way and all this. And I'm thinking, these things are not Jesus. Why are you doing that? So, it's something well, to think about. You know, Joe, uh, Robert's right here. Can you uh, answer uh, Joe's question? Do you, he's thinking that, you know, these might be maybe possible demons, and why are you playing with uh, demonic uh, entities? You know, maybe maybe they might not be uh, angels or demons at all, but, you know, possible creatures from other planets visiting. Or, you know, I think a lot, we get a lot of videos from around the world, and, I know Los Angeles is inundated with spy drones and CIA black ops spying on the people. Who knows what kind of aircraft is going on up there? But, you know, there are some videos that are coming out of Los Angeles, and these things are seeming to do unconventional maneuvers in the skies. Right, Joe? Yeah, no, th- these things are definitely definitely um, unnatural. They're not of nature. And... Um I'm thinking that they are to confuse the masses, and uh, again, I'm not a religious guy, I don't go to church, but I do know my Bible, and uh, Jesus said that there's going to be a mass deception, and a wide road, a wide gate, many people are going to go through the wide gate to destruction because they're going to be deceived, and only a few people are going to go through a narrow gate 
and they're going to have everlasting life. So I'm thinking worldwide, in India, Japan, everywhere, people are being are going to be deceived more and more with these things. And and um, you know, I, I respect Mr. Bingham, like I said, but uh, that's just my only concern that people might be um, uh, fooled with these things. And the, uh, the reason I say this as well is because. Robert, I believe you said one time that they're going to come and, and help us, right? They're going to make things better for us. Is that what you said, sir? Well, well, what I said is that uh, right now we are running the uh, on oil, which we don't really need to do, and destroying the planet only in the name of profit. Uh, right. Uh, they are trying to give us technology that will not destroy the earth, will, will not destroy us, will not uh, kill us in the end, and not, that's just oil, uh, nuclear radiation, look what happened in Japan, I mean, there's so many things that we're doing in the name of profit, when we could do, you know, absolutely a whole different, what it is, well, we're going well, to, a better world, is that, is that right, to, um, that Mr. Bingham? They're going to usher us in, into a, a new uh, transition of living. A better world, right? A better world, of course. Okay, well, doesn't the Bible say that before Jesus comes, the world has to be chaotic? Oh, and we ought well, to pray, not, let your kingdom well, come? But I did not say that that, that might not happen. Of course, it's happening now. So, one, so it might get so, worse. It might get worse, but, you know, you got to ride out the storm because what it is, it's like a baby being born. Uh... The pangs of pregnancy, but once the baby's born, everybody, uh, the, the mother forgets about the pain because she loves the new baby. And but that's, 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 uh, that's after Jesus that comes. Happen. You know, at third phase of the moon, people ask us if they're demons, angels, if they're godlike. There a lot of religious overtones involved. You know, at third phase of the moon, the way I think, and I think a lot of other people think, a lot of our viewers have the opinion that. It's really out of our hands. I believe the government are creating things right now to do an illusion, a mass hoax over the people, some kind of massive holographic imagery that's going to trick everybody. And it had nothing to do with God or Jesus, but they're going to make it seem that way. And, uh, you know, uh, what do you think about this uh, Ivy I, I West? Think that, no, yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, so we're talking about, what do you think about the conspiracy that the U.S. government or government cooperate on a mass scale to do a mass hoax with holographic imagery, creating some kind of godlike event? Absolutely. Have you seen the helix and the spirals and all of that? Absolutely. They have that technology today. Not only that, with all the drugs that they're giving people and all the radiation that they're allowing to spew out of Fukushima, and, and all of this stuff is affecting us so that they can use their mass mind manipulations and MK Ultra, uh, you know, uh, draconian. Um, they have a war on us, and that's what they're going to do. They're, they're, we're their slaves, you know, and that's what they want to do. It's a mass make. deception. Yeah, Hello? it's very, very, very big. You've got, you've got the uh, old York right moving to America. And, uh, Yes, MK Ultra. I think our vice president, former vice president Dick Cheney, was the head of this. MK Ultra, the brainwash system. They've studied prisoners, our own citizens, Manchurian candidates. You know, this is the real world. You know, religion, demons, you know, that's a big picture. But I know we are susceptible as a people with this religion overtone, and they may take that and use it to our disadvantage. The reason we the reason we bring up religion, I think, is because if you know we know about nature, God created us, and we know about nature. Anything that is unnatural, then that's where God, God we start asking if it's uh, you know re religion kicks in when it's unnatural, it's not of nature. Things that are flying out there, and we cannot explain what they are. And the Bible says that there's angels that, or Satan, transforms himself into an angel of light. 
that's why uh, religion kicks in because it kind of matches with what the Bible says. Pardon me? I, 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 I disagree with that theory. I, I've actually done a lot of research into demons because of that, and into angels, and to all these various different things. And uh, as far as the, what I think the evidence shows is that UFOs' behavior falls pretty much under the same umbrella as human behavior. And that's, in fact, I think humans are a bit more demonic than these ETs. I mean, we've, there's no evidence of Nazi-like behavior among extra, extraterrestrials, no evidence of sadism or anything like that. And we do know what they are. I think the evidence shows very clearly that these are biological beings from other planets. I think it's the theory which fits the evidence best. What shows that? What what do you ta what do you have that can that can say that it's from another planet? What if they, what if it's demons trying to fool us? Um, well, you know, I think that at some point you have to take things at face value. It's, right. Demons, I think, uh, uh, there is such a phenomenon as that, and that's much more closely associated with hauntings. And I've talked to people who've you know, dealt with possession and things like this. So I certainly am not, you know, just talking out of the blue here. I I'm pretty. You know, I've got some research done onto this. And when people I get possessed, I just don't see the connection uh, there. Okay, let me ask you: when when people get possessed, what are the demons trying to do to that person? Isn't it to confuse people, confuse the masses, and scare people? Is, is, isn't that the tactic? Um, to a certain extent, I think it's to subvert a person's will, and the evidence shows that ETs are actually trying to help us. I mean, the very exactly. most common thing that happens to people when they're taken on board that they're given messages about nuclear proliferation, uh, pollution, th th these kinds of dangers. They're taught also about how to do uh, psychic healing and taught about themselves in very spiritual ways. People come away from their encounters very, very spiritual and uh, often will abandon religion as a result. So, uh, I like well, that's my whole point. That, I think that's the whole point, to abandon God, to abandon religion. Well, no, 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 I think that's their whole purpose. Grows, grows even stronger. So I, I just don't think the evidence shows the connection between the point I want to make is between demons okay. and UFOs. I really just don't think that that explanation is correct. Exactly. I like to say, this is Robert speaking, I like to say that uh, uh, the government is, uh, the governments around the world and the powers that be are doing a lot of things to, uh, to make us think uh, that they're bad and that when there's a lot of, you know, demonic things or whatever. But the terrestrials themselves are utilizing these methods that they're using and reversing it and making it a tool for them to enlighten the public as, as to what's going on. So no matter what the governments or the powers that be use, the terrestrials have the ability to reverse it and make it a tool for themselves. So I'd like to let people know that. Uh, I respect what you no say, Robert, what, but no it contradicts what, scripture. No matter what they're working on, it's not going to work. All right, we're in our second half hour of the radio broadcast. Is everybody here still with us, Preston Dennett? I'm here. All right, Ivy West? I'm here. Great, Hello. Robert Bingham? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, and Joe Rodriguez? I'm here. Great, and we're going to invite one more guest calling in from uh, 201. This is Third Phase of Moon. Welcome. Who am I speaking with? How you doing, Blake? It's Mark. Hey, Mark. How you doing? you have any questions for our guest tonight? Yeah, this question goes out to any of the guests. Um, first of all, I'd just like to say, like, whether they're angels or demons, we know they're one of them. And, you know, no disrespect to what Rob Bingham's saying, you know, about uh, them giving us new technology to, you know, advance our culture or whatever. But in the end, what will that um, technology cost us, you know, that's just a question to ponder. And, and on, on another thing, um, what do you guys think about our government using, like, the Mars program to, like, slowly reveal the truth about the universe to us? Well, I'd like to answer your question about uh, them giving us technology. Uh, they will give us technology once they uh, govern the world. Uh, the only reason they don't as of yet is because a lot of the technologies that we get out of these UFOs, we make them into military weapons in order to have the edge on, and power over all the, everybody else. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, what that's, part about, that's what all these countries are working on. So they yeah. won't give it out unless they can have total control of it. And, and naturally, you know, uh, would you give a kid a gun, you know? It's the only way we're ready for it. 
that's one of the questions on the, the technology. Uh, the, so as far as the Mars program and um, the slow trickle down information that comes in, I know it's far away. But, wow, can't they just give us some decent video in real time of the landscape, not digitally enhance it to look and come out red? Why are they trying to hide atmosphere evidence and, you know, life on Mars? What What is their purpose? If they Are they ever going to share any evidence? Is NASA a cover-up? Is MUFON a cover-up? Cover up? What do you think, Preston? NASA stands for never a straight answer, and that was not my moniker. That was given to them by the press years ago. And uh, honestly, I think that, yes, they are involved in a huge cover-up, um, specifically with uh, UFOs and the whole space program. And uh, it appears that you know pretty much all the, ast- all the uh, sh- uh, flights to the moon were followed by UFOs. We found stuff on the moon that was definitely uh, alien, and uh, a lot of photographs of this have already come out. You can see them on the internet very easily. And yes, I think uh, uh, Mark's absolutely right. There is a cover-up with uh, what's going on with Mars as well. And uh, I know for a fact that I've talked to some people who have had seen footage and then later saw it released, and it was blurred out. You know, like very clear photographs of UFOs were that he saw were very, very clear, and then were later released, and they were completely blurred, and you couldn't make out what this thing was. So, uh, and there's other accounts coming out of NASA where people's job it is to erase UFOs out of pictures, um, specifically on the moon and um, space pictures of uh, in space. So, uh, yeah, there's definitely a, a cover-up uh, as far as NASA. I agree with that. Ivy, do you think that, you know, the Illuminati, you know, MK Ultra, to make the mind warp to the way they want us to think? They don't want us to be free thinkers, you know, come up with great ideas. You know, they, they got the ideas. What do you think about subliminal messaging, NASA, and, uh, you know, what they're up to? Well, we're being bombarded on a daily basis of being told what to do. People think that their thoughts are their own, but they're not. You know, and I can prove it to you. What's the opposite of tall? Just a quick answer. Short. Yeah, everybody says short. But if you have if you have two objects that are of equal mass and going in opposite directions, the opposite of of short or tall is it short. The opposite of tall is deep, and the opposite of short is shallow. So they have us they have us driving on on uh, parkways and uh, parking in driveways. They, they have this word art, they have these mind control, and they've done it through the media, they've done it through drugs, they've done it through through uh, the education system, they've done it through every level of consciousness on this planet. Look, you can't have a bunch of Christ-like conscious people running around. They're not very manageable, and they don't pay taxes. <laughs> very well said, Ivy. So, so you know... I'm sorry, but you can't have a bunch of educated people running around because they're going to start asking why and who and what. And, you know, all of a sudden, you know, you've got uh, whistleblowers everywhere, which we need to be. We need to be vigilant at all times, you know, about our liberty. Our liberty isn't just taken for granted. You have natural rights. You have unalienable rights that are creator-given. And these governments and these uh, agencies cannot lean them. They are unalienable. You know, you know, I mean, you're exactly right, but we have to ask ourselves and honestly ask yourself down in what you really feel. If, you know, a lot of these people that have the ultimate power were born into it because it's old money, it's gone back centuries, if not thousands of years. So if you're born into it and they know no other way but to have this power, they're not going to give it up because if we were born into it, it'd be hard not to go against something that's that good. For power your... corrupts. Mm-hmm. Absolute power corrupts absolutely, and they rule by power. That whole thing is more, 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 more. They can't get enough. Yeah, they bankrupted the entire world, pretty much. Yeah, you know what? Is criminals. I'm sorry, but it, that's what it's morphed into. 
The whole planet is run by a criminal element, an alien criminal element, and a demonic criminal element. All of it. I like to know. There you go. There you go. Ivy, now, Ivy, now you're talking my language. Go ahead, UFO investigator. Like to know. Was Joe Rodriguez? Yeah. Well, Ivy said demonic, and that's what I'm trying to say. It's all demonic. It's all to confuse people. It's to um, confuse the masses worldwide, not just in the United States, but all over the world, to look up and, and, and don't waste your time reading the Bible. Don't waste your time waiting for Jesus. Because these things, they can see them. They're flying all over the place. And to me, I think it's a, it's a great deception. Well, I'm, not saying all, I'm not saying all UFOs are demonic, okay? I'm saying there is a demonic element. There's a trans-dimensional um, element. There's, uh, there are all of these different things. And even in the Bible, he said he had other sheep. So, you know, I'm not saying that you just by the mathematics alone, we know there's other life out there. Then it can't all be demonic, demonic but I'm sure that... Well, let me there tell you. There, there, it, it says, uh, he says that there's angels out there. Three quarters of angels, uh, one fourth of the angels, or one third were taken away with Satan. So, oh, yeah, so, but, there, but those are the heavens, Joe. There's good angels and bad angels up there. You have to discern that. No, I, like I know. Michael, I, I, so, 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 Joe, well, you, forgot to, you forgot to tell the radio audience that you are a magician. And that you okay, do I magic. am a magician, but you see, and just a lot because of people they say... That, a lot of people consider that demonic. So, well, you know, yeah, because they don't know. But a lot of them see, consider it entertainment. No, but let me tell you something. Right, it is entertainment. I mean, if I if I make a, a pencil disappear, I mean, and if someone thinks that's demonic, then they got to screw loose. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm the three mean tricks, but uh, I mean, not mean tricks, go, but some really fantastic tricks. Uh, people would consider uh, that a natural person couldn't do that. I yeah, but you said the main word. It, they're tricks. They're tricks. Okay, so they're just tricks. It's no big deal. But you see, what you're saying earlier, you said that every eye will see them, and the Bible says every eye will see him, Jesus. See, so right there alone, it's almost like if you're you're um, you're connecting these UFOs as if they were Jesus himself to save humanity and well, teach us new technology. That's not how well, the Bible. Think, oh, you know, well, Joe, we God made us in His image, and and we are technological beings. Uh, therefore, I believe Jesus will come on a UFO, a giant one. And we'll be riding on a cloud, but uh, I believe that it goes deeper and much deeper. And it doesn't mean that uh, the angels don't have technology; they could do what actually them do things that are literally impossible to. The imagine. angels are spirit; they're invisible. The angels are invisible, according yeah, to the scripture. Well, yeah, I know. Let's uh, stop this. I don't problem. believe that I'm dealing with uh, with demonic forces at all. Uh, the birds and in, in, in the uh, I have things happen with the nature that really respond well to what, what, what I'm doing, and so I do not believe they would do that if I was uh, operating with demons. I yeah, understand. I, mean, you know, I personally let me, think... Let me say this, guys, is that you guys united because of Third Phase of Moon. Robert Bingham came to Third Phase of Moon, announced that he could summon UFOs. We set the place and the time. Joe Rodriguez showed up. People started showing up. Hundreds of people started showing up over these events. And actually, police officers, LAPD showed up. Joe Rodriguez shot an incredible video that went viral, made national television. And uh, it involved police officers looking up at lights in the skies. Are you saying that the LAPD were witnessing demons, Joe? Well, you're not. Why, why? They don't know what they were looking at. They're looking up. They don't know what it is. They saw something. Just like I did, you know, and the Bible says that Satan uh, is out there and he's a grand deceiver. See, I know about optical illusions, so I, I can deceive people when I do a trick. So Satan can do that a million times better than I can. The, the objective okay, is, okay, so, so the objective, the objective the being is to push Jesus Christ aside so that these UFOs can take over. Go They're ahead. not going to win. It's not going to happen. But in people's hearts, in people's minds, it's happening already. I don't agree more. I, I just don't. I don't have. Pardon me. I think they don't understand. 
it's easy to call them angels, it's easy to call them demons. The fact is, they're very much like us. And so I just... Well, what makes you say that? What, what gives you that impression? Um, well, people have had contact with them. They speak with them. They, um, they look like us. They wear clothes. They have families. I mean, I just don't know what, why you would con jump to the whole demonic theory. And I'm for that you matter, why. there's you a why. lot of people who do not follow the Bible. I mean, most of this world who do not follow. Right. No, I agree. I, this is uh, more geared uh, towards those people. Hey, well, so, you know, this is mainly they, for they, them, to confuse them they, more. They We're going to be shutting down this radio show. We're running a little bit out of time. I want to thank everybody from around the world yeah. who listened in. But I want to say thank you to Thanks. Robert Bingham, the UFO summoner, for joining us right here on our live radio. He's going to be summoning UFOs in Los Angeles at Griffith Park on February 10th, 2013 at 11 a.m. We're going to post updates on Third Phase of Moon YouTube to give everybody updates on the event and also check out UFO Robert Bingham. Thanks again, Joe, for joining us. The investigator, Joe Rodriguez, and your incredible footage. Ivy West from Oahu, UFO promoter, and also Preston Dennett, famous author, and has some many great books out there involving UFOs. My name is Blake Cousins. We'll be right back. Welcome back. My name is Blake Cousins, and tonight we have some special guests to be speaking with. John, hello. How are back. you, Blake? Hey, I'm doing good, John. So, I want to know what's going on with every, all the listeners out there. We got this petition, everybody. We need your help. If we can get these 25,000 signatures by this Friday's deadline, we can force the U.S. government to respond. If we don't get 25,000, it's going to become 100,000 after this. So for all those listeners out there, just go to petitions.whitehouse.gov and sign on. It takes 25 seconds of your time. Wow, so you're saying, John, that the deadline is actually happening this Friday and our only chance at it to, for this 25000 is going to end? Correct. That's right. At midnight tonight. If we don't get it, it's over. You know, I'm, uh, I feel kind of sad about that. You know, trying to get the word out and getting those kind of signatures isn't easy to get uh, up in a you know two or three weeks. They almost ask the impossible. What do you say, our next uh, guest here, Preston Dennett? Yeah, it looks like it's going to be pretty tough. Um, yeah, I don't know. How how many signatures are there? Do, do either of you know so far? Only a few thousand. Not very many at all. Nothing close to what's needed. See, I it don't needs understand over 20,000 more. I, I don't understand people's apathy about this subject because uh, it, it would totally change society if, if uh, UFO information was actually released. Our government is sitting on stuff that people just would not believe. Seriously. Well, we get I, about 150,000 views a day on Third Phase of the Moon. And, you know, people ask questions. Why isn't the government disclosing? Why do they want to keep secrets? And we have the opportunity to get some of these answers. And then, you know, people just really don't uh, participate as much as we'd like. And, yeah, and that's the sad thing. Yeah, I, I think there are a lot of people who are struggling with this phenomenon, you know, on a very personal basis. But uh, for most people, it's not like that. UFOs... Eh, you know, they can kind of, they don't think it really affects their lives. And I think we need to make it clear that it does. You know, UFOs are pervasive in society in a lot of ways that people don't even recognize. And, uh, and the whole fact that UFO technology is being suppressed is a perfect example. The kind of technology that should be available to us isn't, because these people are sitting on it for one reason. I think the bottom line comes down to money and power, honestly. I, I completely agree. You know, we've had technologies that we could have eliminated gas, use electricity only for cars. We're using internal combustion engines from 1850s, this technology. Why? We know we can do better than that, and it's all because if we had solar-powered cars, they couldn't profit off of it. And you're right, Preston, that's where it all comes down to. 
But there are forces in the government that obviously want this to happen because they keep leaking out information. Obviously, they're the minority of the group, but nonetheless, they're leaking some information. We just need the part of the media and, you know, all the listeners and the viewers of Third Phase of the Moon to, to everybody to unite, move on, everybody to get together and do something uh, collaboratively. Not, not just one person doing one thing and another doing another. Everybody needs to work together for this big goal. Right. Exactly right. Hey, you know, we have some people still holding on on the phone, and we're going to get to you here momentarily, so just stay there. And if anybody's got any questions for the panel, we got Robert Bingham, Preston Dennett, and Dr. John Elias, you know, famous guys in regards to UFOs, lots of knowledge here on the panel. To call in to one three four seven nine three four zero three seven eight. We're live right now. And uh, R- Robert, what do you got to say about um, you know what we've been talking about? The technology that's probably the government well, has possession, and they're you know they're not releasing it. Well, to the- I, I believe that uh, <clears throat> a select few uh, have been profiting off the technology for the longest, and uh, that's why they're suppressing it. Plus, also that the United States wants to keep an edge, the government's going to suppress it as long as they can because they, they, I feel that they're controlled by the corporates of the world. You know, it's a monetary thing. And, uh, and, and the people in power don't want to release that. They want to keep it. And they don't, they'll do whatever it takes to keep it. I, but, you know. uh, if, if they're going to have to deal with the terrestrials when, sooner or later and because... The, the, you know, we're killing the planet, and uh, that has to stop, and, and it is going to stop, you know, just a matter of time. A matter of time before, hopefully, we get some information in regards to, you know, anti-gravity. Preston, you've interviewed lots of people in the field. Do you pretty much feel in your gut that, you know, the technology is there, and they already have these vehicles like George Jetson and anti-gravity that we could enjoy straight out of a Star Wars movie? Oh yeah, I'm I'm pretty sh- I'm I'm beyond convinced. I've talked to way too many people. One lady I talked to who I know worked quite well, I've interviewed her several times. She worked out of China Lake. Um, and she had access to some technology that she was told was taken directly from a UFO and they took it out into the field and tested it. It was this laser beam type of thing which was able to levitate objects. And if you change the setting, it could, you know, fry them or vaporize them. It was a electromagnetic beam that had several different settings that could do various things. And uh, they went out and tested it. And some of these soldiers, they were going to, you know, try and uh, kill some of the mules, just blow up the mules. And this lady who I interviewed was really, really upset about that. And it caused a huge to-do. She, she wouldn't let him do it. And uh, she ended up getting kicked out, actually. I like it. I'd like to interject that I personally saw a uh, Jetson type of vehicle uh, and, and I saw them downtown LA and uh, they do already have them, the, the terrestrials have them. Uh, I believe that the, the government uh, still, you know, working after 50 years, they're still trying to uh, figure out a lot of things and uh, but they're right. doing a good job at doing it. And, yeah, I think there's a lot of stuff they still don't understand that they've gotten from this stuff. And, and they are leaking it into society bit by bit. You know, the integrated circuit, fiber optics, night vision goggles. These are things that have been pointed to towards having come from UFOs. I wasn't sure if it was it was myself that you were talking to, Blake. Good evening. This is D. Michael in Denver. Yeah, it's Jim. Hey, welcome. Go ahead. Do you have it's any questions? Such a, it's such an honor to speak with you. Um, I, I really appreciate the, what you're doing um, allowing the people to to see these videos. Um, personally, um, I've, I've been deeply involved um, for well over 25 years, and um, I can say from personal experience that my, my sixth sense um, is is growing and evolving, um, and it's it's largely in part due to people like you, Blake, that are are publishing these videos. Um, you know, the people get the opportunity to develop that sixth sense and uh, can learn how to differentiate between what is clearly uh, an identifiable object and something that is um, either not of this world or, or in some other way um, uh, supernatural. So I, I just want to applaud you and I, and I want to thank you um, 
you know, you, you really are a, a, a very welcome addition to the community. Hey, uh, Michael, I appreciate, uh, you know, the words we try over here at Third Phase, man, to get the word out. We just received a video that's been on YouTube for a couple days now, but we try and get video that's relevant, something spectacular, something that nobody's ever seen before, and, uh, you know, get people like you seeing these things to make up their mind of what they're looking at. Possibly a lot of these things are military, CIA drones, suppressed technology that we don't know exactly what's going on. But, and you know, having the, the awareness, having people get their cameras ready in case they're going to see something and videos are constantly coming in. Michael, have you ever, uh, you know, captured or seen any UFOs in recent times since, you know, watching Third Phase of Moon? Well, personally, um, my first um, eyewitness experience was some 20 years ago. Um, uh, I, I personally witnessed um, an object that looked like a, a 50-gallon barrel, except much larger and bright orange, um, uh, looked like pointed metal uh, floating in the sky um, uh, south of the Denver area around Castle Rock. And, and I can tell you from personal experience that um, this calling upon of UFOs um, and this telepathic reality that prayer represents um, is a very, uh, very provable subject matter. Um, I have been able to and have witnessed the presence of what what might be referred to um, as angelic um, entities. Um, I, I've, I've got a lot of information about this subject um, that, that I could spew for hours and hours. I don't want to want to waste your, your listeners' time or or your or your guests, they seem very knowledgeable, and I, I would be very pleased to listen. Um, I'm just so honored to be able to make contact with you, Blake. Um, I think that, you know, we, we, we need this movement. Um, I'm sorry to hear that we're, we're so short on the signatures on the petition. I don't think there's much we can do in the short amount of time. Um, but, you know, um, the node bends the shock, and in times where uh, we feel discouraged, um, all we need to do is raise our heads to the heavens, um, witness the poem of God's creation, and realize that all vicissitudes will come to pass. Um, all of these things will be uh, 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 available to us as time goes by, um, but I would strongly urge uh, at, least, uh, at least the listeners um, who are people of faith um, to, you know, closely examine the historical reality um, and, uh, you know, what we know. Uh, throughout history, there have been examples of men that can literally command the elements. Moses, for example, was, was described as parting the Red Sea with the use of a serpent staff. Types of events, whether, whether considered um, religious metaphor or otherwise, should be carefully and very closely examined before really going uh, deeply into the subject matter because um, there are so many potentialities that uh, it can be very, very difficult and overwhelming. It takes a very, very long time for that sixth sense. Hey, uh, you know, exactly, sixth sense and, you know, having that power to know possibly entities around special beings, higher beings, you know, speaking of, you know, angels, you know, Robert Bingham is going to be summoning UFOs on February 10th. I want to get to his theory on angels and uh, what he thinks these entities are that are being captured on film over Los Angeles. But I want to go to uh, caller 201. Welcome to Third Phase of Moon. If you have any questions or what do you think about you know government suppression of technology? Yeah. Um, how you doing, Blake? It's Mark. Um, I'm a, I've been with the show for since the beginning. And I, I would like to say, as an amateur uh, investigative mythologist and uf amateur ufo ufologist, that there is a lot of suppressed uh, technology, such as uh, what Edward um, Foshe said in 1998, where the, the UFO tech actually had some kind of like quasi crystals, sort of like what you see in Stargate, where they, you know, they powered the ancient spaceships and stuff like that, I guess. And that these, and then the more authentic alien crafts are really only seen in, in infrared. You know, the ones that we see with our visual uh, and visual spectrum are actually uh, either could be holograms, and they are, like uh, a couple of you guys just said, that they are re reverse-engineered craft back, dating back all the way back when the Nazis uh, had the 
that special super po- super weapon. You know, speaking of the super weapon and uh, you know holographic images, Robert, do you think that it, it's possible that that's what you're seeing over there in Los Angeles? You know, technology that uh, the government definitely no. Um, just to give you an example, today I had bought a camera yesterday and I went out to take the trash out. And I said, uh, telepathically, I said, uh, show me so I can use my camera. And as soon as I said that and looked up, they were there. So uh, I don't think the government has that capability. But like I've been saying, uh, I, these are angels. And uh, a lot of people would try to say that they're demons or whatever. Um, I don't associate uh, them with uh, demons. I have a, a discernment that they are good angels and and they're angels uh, to me, and that's what I've been saying during all my events. And uh, but it takes a while before, like, uh, before you can get that ability. It just don't happen overnight. Uh, but uh, I've been doing this for almost 13 years, and I only went public what 10, 10 months ago, Blake, when we first did that Skype. So about 10 months but, ago, Robert. Uh you know, wanted to know how he was going to go public. He was kind of concerned. He wanted to go through the right avenue of going public. And, you know, I, you know, honestly, I said, Robert, I think Third Phase of the Moon is a place to go if you want to get the word out. And, um, you know, after that, you know, Robert's been seen around the world. Millions of people have watched the videos. Hundreds of people have shown up on location. And uh, it's absolutely incredible. You know, and Preston Dennett's been working for many years in the subject matter of UFOs. What are you going to be working on next? Oh, I'm currently interviewing a lot of people who have had very close encounters and putting together a book about that. So uh, I think that's uh, going to be really exciting. I interviewed a gentleman recently who is a fireman, and uh, he's just recently had a really interesting encounter in his home in the suburbs in which these uh, ETs kind of just dropped through the ceiling. And uh, actually he woke up floating over his bed and uh, was wondering what the hell was going on, you know, could not figure it out until this light filled the room and these ETs dropped through the uh, ceiling. So uh, he, he was very frightened by the whole experience, actually, and uh, later had another visitation, which wasn't nearly as frightening, in which he asked them, well, why do you keep taking me? And uh, they did not answer. But it's, uh, it's an interesting case and uh, one of many that I'm hoping to include in this book that I'm putting together, yeah. Well, that we look forward to the uh, books in the future. You know, John, John, uh, Doctor John Elias, what do you think of uh, you know getting together with President Dennett and you know getting a third phase of Moon book with all the you know sightings we have, the testimony from eyewitnesses from around the world, the Skype interviews we've done. You know, that's definitely a, a good possibility for a future project because Preston is a wealth of information. He has been. Investigating for more than two decades, he actually has 15 books, and like he said, he's working on this one and another one of uh, UFOs over Nevada, I believe. Was that correct, Preston? That's right. That should be coming and, out soon. Yeah. So that's 17. There we go. It'll be 17 in a matter of time. And I actually wanted to use this time to to make a segue to what Preston and I were talking about uh, prior to the show. Now, what I heard recently is a very interesting saying or quote. We're spending all this money on making this international space station. And, you know, we keep sending up these parts and people and all this stuff. Yet, we went to the moon in the early or late 60s, early 70s. And uh, why would we waste time to build a, a, a base in a place that has no resources when we could have built something on the moon that has natural resources that we could have used? Obviously, there had to have been something to keep us from coming back to the moon, and there's a lot of theories out there that say that we were told, you know, unequivocally to stay away from the aliens that inhabit the moon on bases. And Preston knows a lot about the moon, and I wanted to take this conversation with regards to that. Preston, can you tell us a little bit about this base oh, sure, on the moon yeah, and you know, all that? Yeah, I looked into it because uh, I ran into this gentleman who told me an incredible story that he was involved with the uh, astronauts and uh, he was a photographer on one of the ships that you know picked them up and was able to you know have face-to-face conversations with the astronauts and they told him that they had seen stuff on the moon that you would not believe alien bases crashed ufo's all kinds of artifacts that was just amazing and uh, he actually developed a lot of these photos and saw them for himself 
So I'm like, oh, you know, this is an amazing story. I hadn't really heard much about the moon, so I did my research, and lo and behold, it was amazing. You know, there have been UFO sightings on the moon since early history. Prominent astronomers like Herschel and Schroeder, um, these are famous guys, you know, back in the 1700s and 1800s, saw lights and all kinds of stuff on the moon. And it goes on and on. The British Royal Astronomical Society asked people to call in their sightings, and they got thousands of reports of lights and strange patterns. It goes on and on, all the way up to the modern age when we go to the moon, right? And apparently, we're followed to and from the moon by UFOs. And this was reported by Chris Kraft and other NASA insiders. And there's a lot of people who have gone on record saying that UFOs have been seen around these Apollo and Gemini craft, right? So, uh, yeah, it goes on from there. The photos that are now coming out have, have you know, you can buy a, of the shard is one example. These artifacts that are on the moon are, there is definitely something going on on the moon. And I think that basically we were warned off is what it comes down to. And, uh, you know, we've had a special guest, Jose Escamilla, on Third Phase of the Moon, and he claims that they're, you know, with color telescopes, you know, getting super close with powerful lenses and telescopes. I've been interested in the moon for a long time, but um, it wasn't until Jose uh, exposed me to uh, his moon rising video when I bought the DVD a number of years ago, and I, I've been real interested since then. and. In September, I, I went out and bought a Celestron uh, Nexstar 8SE telescope, and I was bent on doing high-definition video. And uh, I found a camera, a Chinese camera, that worked. Matter of fact, it was the only camera that did high-definition. And through a lot of experimentation, I've been able to figure out how to marry the right lens combination uh, with, with the camera to get some just outstanding, uh, breathtaking video of the moon. Maybe, maybe there is a, a theory that Jose says is that when you're looking from the moon to Earth, the Earth would appear gray because through space there's a filter, and basically the same way that we're from Earth looking up in the moon, it's gray, but in actuality there's color. Right. I, I think that there might be, in fact, uh, an atmosphere on the moon. You know, the moon rocks are filled with oxygen and. There's a lot of water they're finding out now on the moon. It's officially being released, at least. So, uh, yeah, and, you know, Fred Steckling wrote a book, We Found Alien Bases on the Moon. Um, George Leonard wrote a book, Somebody Else is on the Moon. Um, and there's a lot of evidence to support that there's something very intense going on there. And just to you cut know, that off. Um, ask uh, Michael about. Have you ever heard of the theory of possible, uh, you know, atmosphere, life, you know, ancient bases there on the moon, Michael? No, this is this is Mark. Mark. Yeah, sorry about that, Mark. Go yeah, ahead. Uh, yeah, actually, I wanted to talk about the about the moon and confirm that there is atmosphere on the moon, which is, which is around six thousand um, kilometers deep, and it's made out of um, an element or gas called natrium. And it's actually this was buried in, in one of the articles that NASA released deep into the internet I had to find you know had to do some digging but that shows that you know there's atmosphere something's definitely going on in the moon and recently NASA had crashed two uh, satellites into the moon to, to prove that the moon could actually be hollow because they can see like the reverberations from like crashed um, right. crash right. satellites a hollow moon in interesting have you heard about that Preston absolutely yeah I've, um, there's official reports of that about how the moon has rang like a bell um, on several occasions when it has been impacted, you know, by our, uh, our and equipment. I've, I've heard that actually from several sources. John Lear talked about it, and Alex Collier talked about it, and, you know, like Mark was saying, we sent up these two recent satellites that we crashed with cameras right behind them that crashed a few seconds later to capture the impact. You know, another interesting theory that Alex Collier put on... Uh, he said, I mean, a lot of his stuff is, you know, you got to take it with a grain of salt. But nonetheless, he suggested that the moon was actually brought here from another solar system, and it's actually uh, one giant ship. Now, that's, you know, kind of out there to think. But then again, at this point, what isn't out there to think? You know, with, with these craft coming in here from 
distant light years and time travel and all that, it you know, it, it could be plausible. Even even if it's a one percent chance, it just it could be plausible. But it makes you want to think of the possibilities of what this thing actually is. Well, you know, that's that, what I think uh we need to do as a people is think because, you know, the government really they really don't appreciate free thinkers, open minders, because they're in power. They kinda wanna keep it to themselves. But let's move on to uh, you know, Robert Bingham. He's gonna have his event coming up here on yeah, February. I'd I, I like to I like to say days. that uh, these are a lot of theories, but what I'm doing is really true fact. And uh, I, I, I don't know if I ever have I've said that. I've uh, asked them for technology. They give me the photos of the technology that they want to give me, uh, that I asked them for. And uh, I'm able to get things, but I'm not ready to ask them for too much more because uh, until I have the uh, the base to use it, and uh, Robert, can you tell us what you're going to be in February 10th, and what the day is going to go like? Would you say? Um, well, to, on the 10th, I'm doing a rain on shine, and, it's, and we're going to get some incredible stuff. Uh, people have been saying to do it uh, somewhere else, and so I found this very spiritual place, and I felt good. And it's in Griffin Park, above Cedar Grove, uh, above uh, the Greek Theater. We're going to meet at the Greek Theater at. Uh, between the hours of 10 and 11.30. At 11.30, we're going to walk up to the top of Cedar Grove Hill, and I'm going to summon the UFOs, and we're going to... Uh... What are you thinking about uh, what Robert is doing over there, Preston, and, um, you know, his capabilities, and are you going to be showing up? Um, I'm planning to make it. I've got it written down. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think it's great. I think, you know, this... UFOs are here. There's no doubt about it. And I think they want to show themselves officially. I think they really do. And, but they don't want to do it in a way that's going to disrupt society. They can't just hand over the technology. We would obviously abuse it. I just don't think we're quite ready for that. But uh, I think they're doing a policy of showing themselves bit by bit. Um, so, you know, I joined a group called Sea SETI. And uh, we called down UFOs, you know, weekend after weekend. And uh, these are mostly lights in the sky and distant stuff like that. But a few times we had some closer up sightings. So I'm, I think there's a day is going to come where they're going to land and we're going to be able to go on board or at least have you know face-to-face -face type meetings. It's incredible. I, you know, that's what everybody says is like, well, I'm not going to believe it until they land, uh, you know, on the front lawn of the White House. And, you know, maybe one of these days that might happen. You know, John, well, you know, they John, actually you're... did. They flew over the White House right, in 1952. Right. Twice in the same week. You so know, they, they did, and no one believed it still. And we have photographs of that. What we got to do is get Robert Bingham over to Washington and, you know, do that thing over there and summon him right over the White House, and that would be something. What did you say? Hey, but, John, weren't you uh, saying something right before we cut to the second half about what you're working on and uh, a new radio show you're doing? Yes, Preston and I are doing a radio show on Saturday, it's debuting Saturday, March 9th, on Revolution Radio, which is at freedomslips.com. Freedom slips, slipping, uh, like slipping on the floor. Basically, it's like freedom slipping away from the hands of the public. But freedomslips.com, 2 to 4 Eastern Time, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And again, it'll be a two-hour show. Saturdays, we'll be taking callers. We'll be talking about UFOs and other conspiracies and Basically, whatever else the listeners want to call in and talk about, similar to what you're doing. Oh, well, you know, I would love to, uh, you know, participate when you get the show up, get it up and running. And, hey, you know, we'll invite, uh, you know, some special guests from our end, and uh, I'd love to participate. Hey, Michael, are you going to um, show up to the event over there in uh, Los Angeles? Um, no, I, I, I'm unable to, to make that trip, um, but I will um, obviously participate in spirit. Um, the fact of the matter is, I think that with the, with the WikiLeaks uh, release of information, uh, Bradley Manning did our planet a great service by um, um, having the, the photographs and the videos of Skinny Bob and J-Rot um, uh, released. I think for, for the uninitiated, um, photographs like that can be easily confused as, you know, Photoshop, whatever. Um, but uh, at least at least from my perspective, um, those are probably, uh, you know, the diminutive gray 
uh, those are probably the, the, the uh, most significant uh, extraterrestrial that uh, our country has had contact with uh, since they were, you know, um, been such close friends to us for so long. And Michael, from what I hear, there's several different types of greys. There's the short ones. There's the short ones with the bigger eyes. There's the tall ones. Preston, you, how many species of visitors? What do you know? How many different types of greys are there? Um, well, we don't know. I think that there's at least seven, or you know, five to seven major species visiting us. But as far as greys, you know, there's definitely different types. Um, and I'm going to say at least three or four major types, and probably a lot more than that. And there's also, you know, a whole category that's kind of a catch-all grab bag of different types of uh, beings. But uh, yeah, there's there's definitely patterns. I mean, we know that there's the greys. We know there's praying mantis type. Uh, reptilian, Nordic. So there are certain, you know, patterns that we do know of. You know, Kerry Cassidy just did a recent interview with Third Phase Moon and, you know, the whistleblower from Project Camelot. And, you know, she was explaining that there was over 64 species of different kinds of alien beings, you know, here on Earth. And, um, you know, some were, uh, you know, good, some weren't so good. And some were, uh, you know, trying to help out the human race, and others were in collaboration with the government. Right. I think that there are definitely some that are in collaboration with the government. And I think what you have is an, kind of an umbrella of human behavior. It's the same with the ETs. Some are good and some are bad. Absolutely. I think that goes up all the way through theology. But I wanted to ask people if anyone's ever heard of that alien contact message which came in the form of a crop circle a few years ago. Basically in the 70s, Carl Sagan prepared, uh, what is it called? Uh, when the, basically a message, a message that the computers run on with the zeros and ones. And it basically contained our our DNA structure, the size of our bodies, the metric system we use, we're inhabited the third uh, third planet from the sun. And we received a message back recently which showed that we said we're carbon-based, they said they're silicone-based. They showed an extra strand of DNA, they showed that they had bigger heads and smaller bodies, and they showed that they inhabit three planets in the star system of Zeta Reticuli. And I think that could be one reason why there are a few different types of greys, because they, you know, they're just evolving like Earth, Earthlings and Marth, Martians. You know, just a planet, a hop, skip, and, you know, right away, right there. And I think that's one of the theories. And I, obviously there's the other theory that these, some of these are bio-robots, uh, glorified robots, if you will. But uh, I thought that was an interesting thing, that alien contact. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's a very, very interesting uh, case that it came back in the form of a crop circle, but not a circle. It was more of a rectangle, and it was identical to what Carl Sagan sent out, identical in the form of the way it was transported and received, but different where it showed the differences in the civilizations. The whole crop circle thing really baffles me because it's doesn't seem to have a super strong UFO connection. There's definitely a, a, a loose one in some cases, but most of them seem to be completely separate from UFOs. I don't know who's doing them. <laughs> you know, uh, the Colin Andrews says that the ones that are from the the ones that are faked, when the branches of the wheatgrass are taken down, they're actually cracked. Supposedly, the real ones. They're taken down literally 90 degree angles, but they're not cracked. They're still growing, and I think that's what differentiates, you know, the the natu the real ones from the fake ones. However, what the real ones are coming from is, you know, a guess as good as any at this point. But yeah, that well, alien contact thing, I thought that was pretty interesting. Under a microscope, if you look at these wheat stalks, you can actually see that they're little nodules. You know, the places where the stem grows burst as if there's some sort of microwave heat energy so you can pr prove scientifically which ones are fake and which ones are real i think the vast majority are real and I'm it's sad close. that no one's taken no one's really taken that to the mainstream media because right what you just said right there that science can prove the real ones from the fake ones yet they're not doing anything about it well you know you look at them so closely and like you say on a, a molecular scale that they are uh, you know Semi, there's some kind of fusion going on, some kind of you know radiation, some kind of chemical reaction, some something that so like you're saying they they're not bending, but when you look at them, they're interwoven, and to do these massive crop circles overnight, you know, on a grand scale is 
basically virtually impossible. Oh, unless... and they're, so, they're so beautiful, too. They're amazing. Well, they're definitely really pretty to look at, no doubt about it. Thank you, Preston, for uh, joining us. Oh, thank you, Blake. I always enjoy being on your show. Um, yeah, I think people should uh, keep their eyes in the skies. There's definitely stuff up there. The UFOs are not going away. I think the activity is only going to escalate. And uh, sooner or later, we are going to have official uh, contact, open official contact. And the government is going to come clean on this. I don't think they have any choice because, uh, like I said, these UFOs are not going away. So hopefully we'll be ready. Hey, thanks a lot, Preston. Uh, you know, it's always a pleasure having you on the show. With all the information you have over your years of experience, it's also great. And, uh, you know, Robert Bingham, the man who summons UFOs, I really want to thank you for joining us as well in his February 10th, uh, you know, event. Robert, any last words here? Yeah, well, I wanted to say that the they have a federation of planets. I've seen the flag. They have seven stars. Uh, they do have a federation. And uh, I like to say that the crop circles, uh, I do know what they are, and, I, and they're not, uh, it's not done by plasma. It's done by uh, technology, and it's done so perfectly and well that they're, they're, they're literally putting it out there for you to look right at it that they do exist. And uh, I just, you know, the, the, this bit about uh, energy causing it, no, it, it's much more than that. Uh, and what they're doing is putting blueprints out there for us to move into the, the next transition uh, to in order to save the planet. Because the planet don't belong to us. But anyway, I'd like everybody to be there February 10th. I invite everybody. And uh, if they are skeptics or debunkers to be there. And, uh, and all the people that want to see it, to be there. And uh, I'll be there and I'll greet you. And uh, if you got questions for me, I'll talk to you and explain it to you. Thank you very much, Blake, for putting me on the show. Hey, thank you, Robert. And I suggest everybody, uh, you know, believers, skeptics, definitely show up February 10th across from right there at the Griffith Park. You know, bring your cameras in. If you capture anything amazing, send it to us at Third Phase. And thanks again, Robert. Uh, you know, and Dr. John Elias, I want to, you know, thank you for joining us. And you're coming up with your radio show. And I want to thank uh, Michael for joining us right here at the Third Phase of Moon Show. Oh, it's, it's been my pleasure. Thank you very much, Blake. Uh, you know, the node bends the stock, uh, the string bridges the gap, and IBAR 330 uh, is perfectly good evidence for any skeptical mind. Hey, I appreciate it, Michael. And, uh, you know, you keep in touch and have your camera ready, okay? Dr. Johnny Elias, any last words right here at Third Phase of Moon? Yeah, keep up the great work at Third Phase of Moon. I can't wait to see some more great footage, and we'll do some more great interviews. Appreciate it, John. You know, you've uh, worked really hard here over on Third Phase of Moon, getting the word out, doing a lot of leg work, and, uh, you know, we really appreciate it. Anytime, Blake, anytime. And, you know, get your cameras rolling. Just today we received some amazing video out of Scotland that we put out just a couple hours ago on Third Phase, and it is absolutely incredible. This art aircraft... Okay, so we're going to just go to break here just for a few seconds. Everybody stand by. We're going to our second half, okay? Hold on.